So I've planted my first early peppers out on the allotment under a low tunnel in oh, about the beginning of May. And now well, I think we're what, the 7th of May. And so I'm going to plant out the second earlies. Now there's not that much difference between them, just uh, a few weeks of difference in terms of the sowing time and not much difference in the height. But there is a bit of a difference in the maturity of the peppers. The first earlies are just ripening. The second earlies are, you know, a month, six weeks away, something like that. And of course, I've still got my main crop peppers to put into the ground and they won't go in for maybe a couple of weeks. And mainly that is because I've got existing crops in the ground that I want to get harvested before I take them out and replace them with the peppers. So anyway, I'll show you how I'm doing it. So I'm planting my second early peppers now. So these are the ones that I planted in early January. And I'm quite pleased with the way they're coming on. They've got some nice little uh, peppers starting to form on them. I don't, for my uh, main crops, I take all the peppers off until I've planted them in the ground. But for the early ones, the whole point of them is to get an early crop. So it seems a shame to take them off. But you do need to get them in the ground quite quickly. And, you know, it needs to be well prepared ground. Give them lots of food, give them lots of water. What's the TLC? That's the nature of first and second early things. You've got to look after them. So these are the first earlies. They're under this little low tunnel. And they're coming on quite nicely. They're just starting to ripen now. And these will be yellow, actually. These are long yellow Ringo. And there's another batch down there. And yeah, I'm very, very pleased with them. They're small, of course, you know, they, they'll always be small, the first earlies, just like your first early potatoes are, but very welcome when you've not had fresh peppers for such a long time. So they're going under that little low tunnel, but that is too low a low tunnel for peppers. So first off, to move this frame top here uh, off this bed, which did have the early spring spinach in, but that's finished now. And we're on to the uh, second early spinach. And so I don't need this now because this is going to be carrots and carrots don't need all this framing. So I'm going to get it moved over. So I've had this warming up for a few weeks now. The soil is really toasty. Quite some clouds in the sky today. Very noisy on the allotment. A few minutes to get everything disassembled, but it's worth it. That's the air ambulance. You might be thinking, why bother moving this? Well, it's all to do with mare's tail. This bed is infested with mare's tail, but really the peppers don't mind that so much. It's easy to weed it out. Carrots that are going in this bed they really don't want to be in a bed with mare's tail. And this bed is one of the few beds on my plot, along with this one, that uh, has a landscape fabric base uh, quite low down. So you can get good sort of nine inch to 12 inch carrots out of it. I just have these little foul weather braces, just in case of very high winds which have been known to rip the tops off these uh, without them. So I mostly feed my peppers with a liquid feed, but I have just given them uh, a bit of Marshall's Organic Extra and a little Vitax Q4 for fruits and flowers. So I'm using these big four foot canes and sinking them quite a long way in. Uh, so about just well over 12 inches because these plants will be pretty big by the time they're mature they're not small plants now and so there we go so we've got lunchbox peppers in here in the main and so just a random assortment of uh, spare peppers so these are all the spare plants and the next three batches that I've got to put out are all smaller so they're this sort of size so nice and small, so they can afford to wait a couple of weeks before they go out. And I will start obviously feeding these with the tomato food uh, because they've got quite nice sized peppers on them now. And you can see why I had to raise the level of this bed. And 
and uh, yeah I've given it an extra 12 inches and you can get a, I can get a bit more by using these chocks so I've got good clearance of the canes and the plants at the moment with the beds closed like this which is kind of what we're going to need in May and early June because we can have some pretty stormy weather and so they will need protection in this isolated spot. Come summer the beds will be like this and this will allow the plants to grow about twice the size that they currently are and I think this is why the peppers grow so well in these low tunnels because they get the, the really warm kind of high humidity of the of the low tunnel top for the leaves but good ventilation and you know a little bit cooler soil down the bottom because of the really good ventilation of having this open they just seem to do so well in here so much better than they did in the polytunnel of course these beds are way way cheaper than the polytunnel as well so I, I really like them and of course I have these low tunnel tops for all my winter veggies and in previous years I just had to store them because I couldn't find any summer veggies that you know, really benefited from these tunnels and they just got in the way and now that I use them for the peppers of course they're uh, a really functional all year round. That's how they're going to stay now during the day and then they'll get closed up at night until it's well above 10 degrees centigrade at night. Right now it's on the borderline sort of 9 degrees, 10 degrees, sometimes down as low as 8 degrees. No risk of killing them but uh, you know they, they really like to be above 10 degrees for maximum yield. So I thought I'd just show you on the laptop some of the pepper varieties that we're growing this year. Quite a nice selection I think. Nothing exotic but uh, yeah pretty nice and here's a few photos from last year's pepper harvest and that was much nicer than the photos I've got to say we had a really great harvest last year and we froze a lot of them obviously we had a va huge number of them fresh uh, and we even used some green ones which we've never used before we normally always wait for them to ripen but we had so many green ones that we had to kind of find uses for them so uh, anyway that's all the peppers sorted so i hope you like this quick video uh, if you're more if you're interested in more details about how i grow peppers then you can check out my ebook which is linked in the description and pick the section on individual growing guides and scroll down to peppers and there's a section there's a chapter on sweet peppers and on chili peppers I gotta admit I'm no real expert on chili peppers we don't use that many of them uh, we do grow them we grow them reasonably successfully but there are many people a lot better than me at growing chili peppers so you know if you want to follow my system and you're not that passionate about chili peppers but you still want to grow them my guide is fine but if you want to be a real expert seek out the real experts my name's Steve this is the seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel and I'll see you soon